This is Catholic Challenge Live on the Living Bread Radio Network. Teams will test their knowledge of the Catholic faith. Join us on this journey as we navigate our way from B.C. to A.D. and everything in between. Today's defenders of the faith will take up their shield and sword to compete for prize money for their organization. Are you ready for the challenge? And now here's your host, Michael Roberts. And welcome to another edition of Catholic Challenge right here on the Living Bread Radio Network. We've got a great game here today. It's going to be an interesting one, I have a feeling. We've got a uh, group, a team of youth ministers going against a team of young adults. And may the best team win as we uh, play the game here today. We want to welcome Joe Frangos and Carol Lipinski. They are the youth ministers. Uh, Joe is the youth ministry or the youth minister for both Little Flower and St. Paul in North Canton. And Carol Lipinski is the youth minister at St. Joseph and St. Joan of Arc. So those are the youth ministers. They are playing against Madison Smith and Jessica Revlock. Uh, one is a member of one youth ministry and the other is a member of the other. We'll get into that here in just a little bit. So teams, welcome. Nice to have you along with us. Let's find out how to play before we begin the game. So I want to welcome uh, Father Leo Worland. He is the pastor at Little Flower Parish in Canton. He's going to read the rules for us. Father? In round one, each team will answer five questions. Correct answers are worth 10 points each. There's no penalty for incorrect answers. And if all five questions are answered correctly, you'll be given a bonus question worth 25 points. All right, Father, thank you very much. We will begin with the yellow team. The teams are yellow and blue. We'll begin with the yellow team, Madison Smith and Jessica Revlock. Madison, you are the team captain. Don't look so excited. Uh, We will begin with you guys. Here we go, girls. Round number one. Question number one, who is the third person of the Blessed Trinity, the Pope, the Holy Spirit, or the Blessed Mother? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Correct. You can hold your applause until the the end of the round. A lot of excitement all of a sudden building. All right. Question number two from Matthew chapter three. In what bodily form did the Holy Spirit show himself at the baptism of Jesus? As a dove, an angel, or water drops? Need an answer, girls. Water drops. (laughs) No, the correct answer, a dove. A dove is where the Holy Spirit came in the form of. Mm. Question number three, when he was 14, he was captured by Irish pirates during a raiding party and taken to Ireland as a slave. He is the patron saint of Ireland. His feast day is celebrated on March 17th. Is this St. Columba, St. Patrick, or St. Michael? St. Patrick. You got it. Question number four, true or false? For a couple's marriage to be a sacrament, it must be open to procreation and education of children. True or false? True. You got it. Question number five, what is it called when all the bishops of the world gather together under the authority of the Pope to consider matters affecting the future direction of the whole church? Is it an ecumenical council, a grand meeting, or an audience? Ecumenical council. You got it, an ecumenical council. All right, girls, at the end of round number one, you've got 40 points. Nice job. Let's move over now to the blue team, the two youth ministers in the room, Joe Frangos and Carol Lipinski. Joe, you are the team captain. Here we go, guys. Round number one starts for you right now. Question number one from Matthew chapter two, who was the king of Judea at the time of the birth of Jesus? Joseph, David, or Herod the Great? Herod the Great. That is correct. Question number two, in which liturgical season do we prepare for Christmas? Advent, ordinary time, or Lent? Advent. You got it. Question number three, it's true or false. The saints in heaven can intercede for us to God. True or false? True. Correct. Question number four from the Gospel of Matthew, to whom did Jesus say, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Peter, James, or John? Peter. Correct. Question number five from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. St. Paul said, This is the greatest of all the virtues, and without which I am nothing. Is it faith, hope, 
or love? Love. And the greatest of these is love. All right, guys, you got all five of those right. On now to the bonus question. It's worth 25 points. From Acts chapter 13. Who was the forerunner of Jesus sent to prepare his way? Isaiah, St. Paul, or John the Baptist? John the Baptist. And that is a round one sweep. Congratulations. Nice job, guys. 75 points now. You are now in the lead. So it's 75 to 40. Blue team is in the lead. And with that, we will take our first break of the game. When we come back, we will introduce you to our contestants. Go nowhere. You're listening to Catholic Challenge Live right here on the Living Bread Radio Network. Prize money for Catholic Challenge is provided in part by Ziegler Tire, serving the listening area for 97 years and counting, with name brand tires and auto service that you can trust. Find out more at ZieglerTire.com. St. Raphael Books and Gifts is a proud financial sponsor of Catholic Challenge, the one-stop shop for defenders of the faith. Their resources are geared toward lifelong and new members of the faith online at catholicbook.net. And welcome back to Catholic Challenge Live right here on the Living Bread Radio Network. I'm your host, Michael Roberts. We've got a great game going here so far between a pair of youth ministers and a pair of young adults that are in the youth ministry program. Joe Frangos and Kara Lipinski, they are the youth ministers, and Madison Smith and Jessica Revlock are the young adults that are playing. We're going to take a moment now and introduce you to our contestants. We'll begin with the young adults on the yellow team, and Madison Smith is the team captain. Madison is a member of St. Paul parish in North Canton. Madison, what else do we need to know about you? Um, well, I'm very active in the youth ministry program uh, through St. Paul's and Little Flower Parish. That's great. And I play guitar. Um. I also <laughs> see your favorite sport is basketball, but you had a little mishap not too long ago or sometime. What yeah. happened? Yeah, so in eighth grade, I decided to join the basketball team. And at the last practice before our first home game, I broke two fingers. Oh, so. no. Never got to play a home game. <laughs> oh, well, there's always next time, right? No, I don't know. I just said that. Okay. Well, Madison, very good. Thanks for playing with us. We're going to move the microphone over now to your partner, Jessica Revlock. Jessica is a member of St. Joseph Parish in Maslin. What else should we know about you, Jessica? Um, I'm very active in my church. I love going to my school, and I am a big Ohio State fan. Yeah, so big of a fan that our, our team colors of yellow and blue, she frowned upon that because she thought it was from that team up north. And I had to tell her, no, Jessica, don't worry. It's the colors of Living Bread Radio. It has nothing to do with that team up north. So <laughs> obviously you are a very big uh, Ohio State fan. You also enjoy cheering, I suppose. Are you a cheerleader? Uh, yeah. Where at? Where do you go to school? Uh, I go to Edison at Perry, oh, and okay. I cheer there. Very good. Well, thanks again for playing and being with us here today. Let's go over now to the blue team, the uh, pair of youth ministers. Joe Frangos is up first. He's the youth minister for uh, Elevate Youth Ministry, which is St. Paul and Little Flower Parish. Uh, what else do we need to know about you, Joe? Uh, well, I'm married. I have a, two, uh, a two-year-old son named Lucas. Um, I love Netflix. The <laughs> Office is my favorite show ever. Okay. You have an interesting way of communicating. Would you fill us in, please? <laughs> I do. I'm trying to make sense of it. So I only communicate probably 90% of the time with emojis and GIFs. Okay. Because so. why not, right? Why not? Uh, how right. does your wife feel about that? Uh, she, she communicates back with a eye roll usually. <laughs> That doesn't surprise me for some me reason. Either, yeah. I can't imagine why. All right, Joe, thanks for being with us. Let's go over now to uh, Kara Lipinski. She is the youth minister for uh, the youth ministry at St. Joseph in Maslin and also St. Joan of Arc. And Kara, what do we need to know about you? You don't have any spare time, it says? I don't have any spare time. Well, that's sad. I, it is. But I enjoy everything I do, so Good. really it's okay. I'm also married. I have three children, all boys. Um, 10, 13, and 15, which is why I don't have well, any don't spare need, time. Yeah, I can yes. see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your kids 
as in the teens that you minister to, they have no idea of what your age is. No, I think they have thought I was the same age for the past like eight years, which is great. <laughs> Eternal. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kara, thank you. Joe, thank you as well. We're going to move on now to our next round of play, round number two. Father Leo Whirlin is back up. He's the pastor at Little Flower Parish, and he's going to read the rules for us for round number two. In round two, each team will answer five questions. Correct answers are worth 15 points each. There's no penalty for incorrect answers. And if all five questions are answered correctly, you'll be given a bonus question worth 25 points. All right, Father, thank you. We'll begin with the yellow team, Madison Smith and Jessica Revlock. Here we go. Ah, see, now they're pumped up. Madison, you are the team captain. Here we go, round number two. Question number one from Luke chapter two. Who was the Roman emperor at the time of the birth of Jesus? Caesar Augustus, Tiberius, or Plato? Caesar Augustus. You got it. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. Question number two, it's true or false, sin can weaken or destroy our lives as children, as God's children, excuse me. True or false? True. You got it. Question number three, which of these names is not used for the sacrament of reconciliation? Confession, penance, or anointing? Anointing. You got it. Question number four, the liturgical act or rite by which a person is consecrated to the priesthood is called what? Baptism, ordination, or confirmation? Ordination. You got it. Question number five, in the Old Testament, who were the special people through whom the Holy Spirit spoke? Canaanites, shepherds, or prophets? Prophets. Absolutely right. <laughs> All right, you got all five of those right, girls. On now to the bonus question. What is the process whereby the church recognizes a person to be a saint or model of holiness? Is it laicization, dispensation, or canonization? Canonization. That is it, and that is a round two sweep. Nice job, girls. 140 points is your score right now. The blue team's up next, Joe Frangos and Carol Lipinski. They've got 75 points, hoping to add to that. Joe, you're the team captain. Here we go, guys. Round number two. Question number one from Luke chapter one, verse 26. Which angel announced the birth of Jesus to the Blessed Mother? Gabriel, Sabrina, or Tristan? Gabriel. That is it. Question number two, from Matthew chapter 27, which criminal was released by Pilate at the trial of Jesus? Simon of Cyrene, Barabbas, or Judas? Barabbas. Correct. Question number three, true or false, infants need not be baptized because they have never committed personal sin. True or false? Need an answer. False. It is false. Absolutely right. They're born with original sin. Therefore, they need to be baptized. Question number four from Luke chapter two. In what town did Mary give birth to Jesus? Rome, Paris, or Bethlehem? Bethlehem. That's it. And here's question number five. Who has the primary responsibility for education of children? Government, school, or parents? Parents. That is it. It is the parents. All right, guys, you got all five of those right. Here we go with a bonus question. To whom does a person confess when going to the sacrament of reconciliation? A deacon, a priest, or a nun? A priest. And that is a round two sweep. Nice job, blue team. You're now in the lead with 175 points. Right behind you, you've got the yellow team with 140 points. We're just about ready to move on now to our next round of play, but before we do, let's pause and thank our sponsors uh, that provide all of the prize money here for our game. And we give special thanks to St. Raphael Books and Gifts, Ziegler Tire, Attorney Mike Demchuk, and Ellsworth Auto Body. Again, all of these uh, area organizations and people stepping up to support our Catholic faith here in Northeast Ohio. So thank you again to our sponsors. All right, on now to round number three. Once again, here's Father Leo Worlin from Little Flower Parish. He's got the rules. In round three, each team will answer five questions. Correct answers are worth 20 points each. There is no penalty for incorrect answers. And if all five questions are answered correctly, 
you'll be given a bonus question worth 25 points. Okay, Father, thank you. Yellow team, you know the drill. You're up first. Madison Smith and Jessica Revlock. Here we go, guys. Question number one from Luke chapter 22. In what garden did Jesus pray that this cup may pass from him? Eden, Galilee, or Gethsemane? Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane. Question number two from Acts chapter two, verse four. What immediate effect did the outpouring of the Holy Spirit have on those gathered together on Pentecost? They got wet, they spoke in tongues, or they fell over? They spoke in tongues. Indeed they did. Question number three. This saint wiped the face of Jesus on his way to the cross. Jesus left an imprint of his face on her cloth. Was it St. Simon, St. Veronica, or St. Mary Magdalene? St. Veronica. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Question number four, true or false? Jesus needed to be baptized by John the Baptist in order to be free of sin. True or false? False. It is false. Jesus did not have any sin. Question number five, where is the Eucharist reserved for adoration and distribution to the sick? In a tabernacle, in an ambo, or in a sacristy? A tabernacle. That is correct. Girls, you got all five of those right. On now to the bonus question. It's worth 25 points. What gesture made by the bishop during the sacrament of confirmation symbolizes the transmitting of the Holy Spirit? The sign of the cross, the laying on of hands, or a slap on the cheek? Laying of hands. You got it. Incidentally, bishops used to slap on the cheek. Luckily, not many do that anymore, but that is a round three sweep. So congratulations, girls. You're now in the lead with 265 points. Over now to the blue team with 175 points. Joe Frangos and Kara Lipinski. Here we go, guys. Question number one, what is the feast on which we celebrate Mary being taken up into heaven? Assumption, Annunciation, or Pentecost? Assumption. Correct. Question number two, it's true or false. Men and women can both be ordained deacons in the Roman Catholic Church. True or false? False. That is false. Question number three, this Polish saint had visions of Jesus and wrote a diary about divine mercy. She was canonized by Pope St. John Paul II. Was it St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, St. Teresa of Calcutta, or St. Faustina? St. Faustina. That is correct. Question number four, what do we call the main laws given to Moses in the Old Testament? The Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes, or prophecy? The Ten Commandments. You got it. All right, here's question number five. The Lord's Day, dedicated to worship and rest, is what day of the week for Christians? Friday, Saturday, or Sunday? Sunday. Sunday it is. Hey, you got all five of those right. On now to the bonus question. What is it called when someone profanes or shows serious disrespect to holy persons, places, or things consecrated to God? Blasphemy? Superstition or sacrilege? Need an answer, guys. Blasphemy? No, the correct answer is sacrilege. That is the correct answer. All right, guys, you are in the lead, though, with 275 points. Yellow team right behind you with 265. It's a very close game. When we come back, it is our final round of play known as the challenge round. Stay with us. You're listening to Catholic Challenge Live right here on the Living Bread Radio Network. All of the prize money awarded on Catholic Challenge is provided through business and individual sponsors. Thank you to those who supported today's show. The Living Bread Radio Network is on YouTube. It's yet another way to hear our quality local programs any time of day on any device. Just head to YouTube, search for the Living Bread Radio Network, and click the subscribe button.
Welcome back to Catholic Challenge Live right here on the Living Bread Radio Network. I'm Michael Roberts, and we are in the midst of a great game here. It's a close game, too. We'll find out how it ends coming up. But we've got a, a team of youth ministers against a team of young adults. Joe Frangos and Carol Lipinski, they are the youth ministers, and they're playing against the young adults, Madison Smith and Jessica Revlock. The blue team is in the lead right now with 275 points, but right behind them, the girls with 265 points. It's time now for the challenge round, and for one final time, we invite Father Leo Whirlin up from Little Flower Parish in Canton. He's going to read the rules for the challenge round. Our challenge round combines knowledge and speed. The first team to ring in may answer the question. If the answer is incorrect, no points are lost, but the other team will have the opportunity to hear the question in its entirety. Correct answers are worth 30 points each, and in, east, and in case of a tie at the end of this round, we'll have a tiebreaker question. <coughs> the team with the most points at the end of this round will be awarded $200. The losing team will be awarded $50. So contestants, get your buzzers ready. The challenge round starts now. All right, let's do it. And by the way, I should mention all the prize money is going to stay with both of the youth ministries. So really, everybody is a winner, but we're still having fun nonetheless. And there'll still be some bragging rights at the end of the game, which may or may not be more important than the money. We'll find out. All right, here you go. You heard Father Leo. Question number one from John chapter 18. Which apostle betrayed Jesus? Blue team. Judas. Correct. Question number two, what are the first four words of the Apostles' Creed? Yellow team. I believe in one God. No, that's not for words. Is that, that's good? Yes. Okay, the judge says that is okay. All right, on to question number three. Who are the first two children mentioned in the Bible in the book of Genesis? Blue team. Cain and Abel. Correct. Question number four. Although it is not his official feast day, which saint do we associate with February 14th? Yellow team. St. Valentine. Correct. Question number five. What is the main theme of the first two chapters of the book of Genesis? Yellow team. Creation. So excited you hit the mic you can't stand your excitement all right and with that yellow team you're in the lead 355 to 335 so very very close on with the challenge round question number six who is the successor of saint peter the church's supreme pastor blue team the pope the Pope. Right now it's Pope Francis. Absolutely. Question number seven. What elements are offered at Holy Mass to become the body and blood of Christ? Blue team. Bread and wine. You got it. Question number eight. There are two levels of the gravity of sin. One is venial. The other, yellow. Mortal. Mortal <laughs> sin. You got it. Question number nine. To whom was Mary engaged at the time of the Annunciation? Blue team. Joseph. That is correct. All right. Who is the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary? Yellow team. St. Anne. That is correct. And I'll tell you what, it's close. Blue team, you're in the lead with 425 points. Yellow team, you've got 415 points. On we go. Question number 11. Who alone in the church can validly ordain priests? Blue team. The bishops. Bishops, absolutely. Question number 12, what prayer does one pray during confession in order, yellow team? Act of contrition. Yeah, in order to express true sorrow for sin and a desire for God's forgiveness. Question number 13 from Acts chapter 20, what day of the week did early Christians meet to break bread and blue team? Sunday. The day of Jesus' resurrection, Sunday, they broke bread and commemorated the death and resurrection of our Lord. Question number 14, what person is referred to as the Ark of the Covenant? Yellow team. Jesus? <laughs> no, I will reread the question. Blue team, you'll have the opportunity to answer what person is referred to as the Ark of the Covenant. Mary. Oh. 
Blessed Virgin oh. Mary, absolutely. All right, here's okay. question number 15. How many psalms are there in the book of psalms in the Old Testament? Blue team. 150. Correct. And with that, you guys, blue team, are in the lead with 545 points. Right behind you, the yellow team with 445 points. On we go. Question number 16. The Annunciation is a meditation in which set of rosary mysteries? Ooh. Anyone? Nope, out of time. The Joyful Mysteries. That's where you find the Annunciation. Question number 17. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, records Jesus' words that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and what? Blue team. Spirit. Water and the Spirit. That is absolutely right. Question number 18 from Luke chapter 11. In response to the disciples' request, Lord, teach us to pray. What did Jesus teach them? Yellow team. The Lord's Prayer. The Our Father. Absolutely. That is it. <laughs> All right. That sound means we're running short on time, so this will be the final question of the game. The current pope is Pope Francis, who is his immediate predecessor, Blue team. Benedict the 16th. That is correct. Benedict the 16th. All right. That is the game. Blue team, you got it. Our final score, 605 to 475. So congratulations to Joe Frangos and Carol Lipinski. You guys are the winner. A donation of $200 will be made to your youth ministry programs on your behalf. Hey, a job well done. Madison Smith and Jessica Revlock, uh, you guys really held your own and you did a great job with 475 points. A donation of $50 will be made to both of the youth, the youth ministry programs. So in total, $250 going to both Ignite and to Elevate Youth Ministry. So congratulations, guys. It was a job well done. You guys definitely earned it. Special thanks to our sponsors, including St. Raphael Books and Gifts, Ziegler Tire, Mike Demchak, Attorney at Law, and Ellsworth Auto Body. They are the proud sponsors of this game and proud to support our Catholic faith here in Northeast Ohio. I'm Michael Roberts, and until next time, do your part and defend the faith. We'll see you back here for another edition of Catholic Challenge on the Living Bread Radio Network. You've been listening to Catholic Challenge Live a production of the Living Bread Radio Network in Canton, Ohio. If you'd like to be a part of the program, email quiz at livingbreadradio.com. For a podcast of this show where you can listen on demand, go to livingbreadradio.com and join us next time for another edition of Catholic Challenge Live.